If you would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I have it here. We can. <laughs> you have to read it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the nation and to the state for which it stands, to the beautiful and insolence, and I have a crazy deal where evil opportunity and justice is all the power I make it. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember <coughs> Shepard? Bowman? Here. Lofile? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Mayor Folk? Yes. Okay, and now we need to look at an approval of the agenda. I think we do have to um, amend it. Um, yes, Mayor and members of the City Council, <coughs> I would kindly request that we amend uh, the agenda under our um, closed session to include uh, pending litigation, um, uh, City of Cadillac v. Uh, the Charter Township of Herring, and I don't have the caption number, but the City Attorney will look it up and we can state that for the record when we go into the closed session. Okay. Could I have that motion? I'll make the motion to make that amendment to our agenda. Spart. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Spoelman? Yes. Wolfile? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Shippers? Mayor Filkin? Yes. Motion carries. Um, we made the motion to amend it. Do we have to make a motion to approve the agenda now? Um, yes. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Support. Sandy, can we have the roll call, please? Councilmember Wolfile? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Shippers? Spoelman? Yes. Mayor Falcon? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> At this time, we'll open the floor for public comment. We do ask if you come forward, if you would please state your name, and then if you would please write your name and address for the clerk. Greatly appreciated. And if you could keep your comments to three minutes or less. My name is Michelle Demerly, and I do live in Cadillac now. I used to live in Wexford County, but now I moved in the city about three years ago. I support Michelle Strobel. I mean, excuse me, I didn't start at the beginning. We need a detective dedicated to investing, investigating the unresolved cases in Cadillac. Um, Cadillac has patrolmen, and they are needed on the streets. No time for investigations. A detective is needed to investigate those crimes or situations that patrolmen have no time for. I support Michelle Strobel in her search for truth and justice regarding her son, Jimmy Strobel, who died under suspicious circumstances. She deserves to know the facts. She does not deserve the treatment she has received thus far. How callous is it to be told at least he died sober? when the authorities hadn't even received the toxicology report. Or the fact that the police never collected evidence already determining for themselves that this is a suicide, yet even the medical examiner wasn't wholly convinced changing the cause of death. We are not yet in a police state where they are judge and jury. We need a detective to investigate and find the facts that the police cannot find to reinvestigate the statements people gave trying to send the authorities in the wrong direction and most of all to find truth for a grieving mother as you would expect for yourselves if you were in her position. Jimmy Strobel was a human being, a father, a son, a friend to many. He had problems, as so many do in Cadillac today. But first, he was a human being. Citizens of this town want to know what happened, but most of all, his mother deserves to know the truth. That was my comment. Thank you for listening. And please, think about it. He might have had problems, but he was still a human being, and he was still loved by many. 
<coughs> Hi, my name is John Taylor. I support the Michelle and her justice for Jimmy. He was a friend of mine. We grew up together. We ran around this city before and after school. Um, for the city to just say it was a suicide and not look into the details of it, this is heartbreaking. I don't know what else to say. She pretty much said everything that needed to be said. Hello, my name is Erica Strobel. I, too, live in the city of Cadillac, Michigan. Um, I am here to support the justice for my brother. Um, I know my brother pretty well, and I know that he didn't have that type of weakness in him. Um, he might have been under some... I guess they're intimidating. <laughs> um, he might have been under the influence of drugs and stuff, and had a... Uh, you guys make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he might have been going through a hard time but the events that led up to my brother's body being found um, do not match up with sorry <laughs> I support those to my brother thank you Erica <coughs> Good evening. My name is Lisa Stewart. I support justice for Jimmy. I did not know him. But as a mother going through what Michelle went through, and he's no longer here, unfortunately, she has helped me and my daughter through this awful, awful fight. And drugs do end all dreams. And I will do anything that I can to help them in just finding the truth, the facts. <clears throat> nobody, nobody is perfect. And it would just put a lot of people's hearts to ease. And if you could just imagine for one second the turmoil and the unknowing. It's, it's un, it's un, you can't sleep, you can't eat, you don't know. I, I'm rambling because there's so much more that needs to be said, but I just want it known that we do need justice for Jimmy and a lot of other people also in this predicament. And I thank you for your time. What did you say your name was again? Lisa Tulick. Hi, my name is Michelle Strobel, mother of James Strobel, and uh, it's been a year, I think, since I've been here and spoke about this, and uh, I believe the last time I was here it was regarding the lack of communication between uh, me and Cadillac PD, which I understand, 
why there's a breakdown in our communication, but it's not fair. Um, what I'm being accused of is not true. Um, there's a lot of issues that need to be addressed regarding my son's investigation or lack of. Um, I was notified or uh, told just the other day that there's no detective on Cadillac PD. They're, they don't have a detective on the case. They don't have a detective on the force. And that the parole officer that has been assigned, I guess, assigned, because we can't get a straight answer of who's in charge of my son's case. It has been deemed or opened up as a suspicious death. Suspicious death kind of indicates that there might be some foul play. It's suspicious. It was changed from a clear-cut case of suicide over to a suspicious death. An autopsy has been amended. And there's no detective on my son's case. Now, I know what created the breakdown in communication, and that happened in March of 2014 when I went to public to Cadillac like Evening News because my son's case was actually opened in December of 2013, three months after he was found, three months after the case was closed. They reopened it in December. And it sat on a desk three months. And when I called to get any updates regarding the case, um, I was told that they just basically didn't have any time for it. He didn't have any manpower to assign for it. And that was it. And I'm like, seriously, now we got, we're, we're jumping up eight months now of nothing being done on my son's case. There was two months that people diverted his case, you know, uh, his missing person's case. They were leading Cadillac PD in a whole different direction, out of state which was foul. I told them it was foul. I was in here every day. Uh, I bumped heads with quite a few officers during the time my son was missing. And I told them where my son would be found. And guess what? A little boy found my son exactly where I told him he'd be found. And how did I know where he'd be found? Because people in this town knew about it. They knew exactly where he was. They know what happened, and they need to be held accountable. Somebody did this to my son. My son did not commit suicide. I know my son was uh, not a lot of officers' favorite, but that has nothing to do with it. He was a citizen here. Might not have been a favorable citizen, but he still grew up here. And there's people on our streets today that have confessed to having some sort of involvement, confess to me but I guess my word's not reliable and I don't do drugs I don't drink I go to work I live in our community just like everybody else I am just asking for a detective if you guys can't handle it if Cadillac PD cannot handle investigating my son's case and properly conducting the interviews that need to be done and bring these people in again, then maybe you should reach out for some help. Get an actual detective on this. Because it seems to me that the patrol officer that this has been thrown in his lap seems to be a little bit overwhelmed from what I gather, from my conversation. And I know for a fact that not all tips have been followed up on. Um, I'm being told they have been, but they're not. And there's people that have eyewitness statements that want to come forward, but they're afraid. They have been threatened. Guns have been held to their heads. This is what we're playing with. And they're still walking our streets for whatever reasons. You guys might not think they're harmless, but I don't know. I guess you haven't had the gun in your face. But... There's a lot of people that don't want to communicate with the officer that's in charge, so that hinders it. They're afraid, and they're afraid of the repercussions because a lot of the information from one of the statements that uh, 
a witness did come forward with through a TNT officer was released into the jails. His name was put right out there. This went through the jails like wildfire, and then when that person got out of jail, it went onto Facebook. Actual snapshots of these reports of a witness coming forward stating what they witnessed somebody confess to. This is scaring all the rest of the witnesses. They have kids. They have a past. They don't want to come forward now. It feels like my son, nobody's protecting the uh, integration of my son's investigation. And this is what our communication, my last communication with, uh, I want to call him Detective Goldnick, but I guess it's our chief of police now, a year ago. He said he can't share anything with me because it will ruin the integrity of his investigation. Well, that's been ruined before it even started. And it, information is being shared from within. It's not from me. Everything that's been shared for me was already publicly known. The facts that were already on the streets, the facts that were ignored by Cadillac PD when he was found, this should have all went. They should have took that into consideration. I know. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate you listening to me. Um, I don't want an email as a, con as a communication. I would like to sit down with our chief of police, as I have asked him, and I've never heard back from him. I would like communications. We have called numerous times to, you know, get updates on the case or at least sit down and talk with somebody, and we're always ran into a circle, and it always comes back to one specific officer. We don't want to talk to him. We want to talk to the chief of police, and I think that's our right since he was the detective that opened up the case. Thank you. Okay, seeing no one else, we'll close the first public comment and move on to the approval of the consent agenda. And this evening we have the minutes from the regular meeting that was held on June 6th, along with the closed session that was held on June 6th. To approve the consent agenda. Second. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? House Member Meinhardt? Yes. Strippers? Bowman? Yes. Roll file? Yes. Mayor Falcon? Yes. Motion carries. <laughs> Next thing on our agenda is the communications. The first request is for approval of the closure of Lake Street between Harris and Cass on July 17th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for the loyal order of the Moose Senior Citizens Picnic. I will make that motion uh, to approve the closure of Lake Street between Harris and Cass on July 17th of this year from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for the loyal order of Moose Senior Citizens Picnic. Support it. Sandy, can we have the roll call, please? Council Member Shippers? Spoolman? Yes. Wolfile? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Mayor Falcon? Yes. Motion carries. The next request is the closure for the closure of Lake Street between Harris and Cass on July 29th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. for the Cadillac Rotary Club Summer Concert. I'm going to ask to be 
recuse from this vote since I'm the requestor. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the. So, uh, we have to make a motion to recuse. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll make a motion to recuse Sherry um, from, the vote. from the vote. Second. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Council Member Wolfile? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Shippers? Mayor Fulton? Yes. Motion carries. That's the first time we've come across that since you've been here. Yeah. Yep. So now I it's the motion. I would motion. have done the same thing. So now you can make that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now I'll make a motion to approve the closure of Lake Street between Harris Street and Cass Street on July 29, 2016 from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. for the Cadillac Rotary Club Summer Concert. Support. Sandy, could we have the roll call? Councilmember Wolfile? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Shippers? Mayor Fulton? Yes. Motion carries. So who's the summer concert? That, is, that one is the Sweetwater Warblers. Oh, okay. That would be great. The next request is for the closure of a lake between Harris and Cass from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and the closure of Chestnut Street between Rogers and Donnelly from 7.15 a.m. to 7.40 a.m. on July 25th for the Lake Cadillac Team Marathon. Yeah, I think we got the wrong date on that, Sandy. I think it's June 25th. Isn't it this Saturday? Uh, yeah, it, is. it would be June, June 25th. This Saturday, yes. yes. You're correct. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. I'll make a motion to approve the closure of Lake Street between Harris and Cass from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and the closure of Chestnut between Rogers and Donnelly from 7.15 to 7.40 a.m. on June 25th for the Lake Cadillac Team Marathon. Support. I, I do want to say that I looked at this for a long time and I you know, I, I feel okay closing Chestnut um, because it's a Saturday morning and it's really early, but otherwise I'd, I would have struggled with this request mm -hmm. if it would have been midweek because it's a Saturday and it's early morning. Yeah, yeah there won't be much traffic there and yeah. it's pretty easy. And it's a very short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. That's just because so I'm not a running. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. That's just so you can turn people around there, right? That. I was told that there's um, um, no police escorts out on on races anymore. So uh, we do have um, two start or three starting lines. The 5K will be on Lake Street with the city 5K course. The other one's right in front of the high school, but that's a half marathon. 10, 15 people. The marathon and all the relays all start on Chestnut down the road there, and 50 people and they'll spread out within five minutes where it's not going to be any kind of traffic. But without that police escort lining them up to say go, I, I didn't feel comfortable saying we were going to be able to stay completely on the sidewalk and off to the, off to the way there. Um, we're looking at next year possibly moving our start time up a half hour earlier to avoid some of the summer heat. Um, and it sounds like that would be welcomed from what you're saying there. Okay. Good. Was there any other... Um, I was here a couple of years ago saying, you know, uh, the three disciplines, they, they put their race on top of mine, and uh, then they put it the day after mine. A um, new update on that was when I went in to fill out this paperwork, the person behind the desk there said, you know, there's another race this weekend. The city of Cadillac would really benefit if you moved your race. I was the one that had the race first. I sought out the date where we weren't going to have any conflict at all. Um, I had to go down and escort three people down from Cadillac High School down to our start line on Lake Street because of all the stuff they had out there. They thought that was the start of my race. Um, was, that wasn't that big of a deal, but um, you know the, the overlap um, has caused problems. Um, I am willing to move my race, but if I were to move my race, is there any way to say if they or somebody else were to try to do this again, that we could have a protected weekend. Um, if, you're not a, if you're not a runner, and I don't know if, if any of you are or not, the, uh, the difficulty of having 
a triathlon, which includes a half marathon and a marathon itself, the two of them go together, we're competing for the same group of people. Um, I have Facebook pictures that I snap screenshots where they said, don't worry, this race will be gone in a couple of years and we won't have this conflict, re uh, referring to my race. Um, I'm willing to move, I'm willing to help out the city, help out myself and them um, in the future. But I, I just don't want to move it to July and then have the same thing happen again. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if, is there, is there any way, I know that, I was told last time that you can't show favoritism. I understand that. Um, we do, uh, we are sponsored by Manton Rotary. Um, when you fill out the, um, the sheet for the, the, the pavilion there, it lists five ways that uh, you would receive special treatment or preferential treatment. One is if, it's, if you're sponsored by Rotary. It's, well, it's not Cadillac Rotary, but it is Manton Rotary. Uh, we are nonprofit and we are local. We're three of those five. Um, I also found out two days ago that three disciplines never paid the YMCA for their workers that they had at their event last year. They're, they're coming in, they're taking our money and leaving with it, um, where all of ours stays completely here. Okay. I do have one other topic that's kind of happy, um, but I don't know if ne you guys, if, if now's the time or if a public comment would be Does better. Does it have to do with the race? Not with this race, no, with... The public comment. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Marcus, what is the procedure if there's conflicting, does it go by who's uh, requested that date first, or what is the process for that? Uh, it has been first come, first serve. Uh, we have uh, utilized the talents of our Visitors Bureau to help facilitate getting uh, the different parties to talk, and that's where we ended up with this compromise where they're both on the same weekend and on the same, and basically sharing the same day. Um, ideally, we would prefer, we being the city, that we don't have multiple marathons, whether they're oh, yeah. triathlons or half marathons or whatnot, all occurring at the same time at the same place using the same footprint, just because of the added congestion and confusion right. that, it could, that yeah. it could cause. Very much. Uh, not necessarily from our own, um, our own logistics, they're rather simple, especially with a lot of the stored and staged uh, off off property and, and actually they're using the school property for so if there's storage. so if there's one race already scheduled then when somebody were to come in with another application wouldn't they be told that or well, denied and so, and for that day and again we we tried to work out a compromise the other race that was that was mentioned uh, brings in uh, quite a large number of people uh, and it would be to the detriment of our community as a whole if, if the hundreds of people that come in, if not more than hundreds, uh, mm -hmm. no longer came here or didn't come to, to Cadillac. But I think if it's... Without that compromise. But I think that if the compromise isn't making everyone happy, mm -hmm. then it's a detriment as well. Um, I, 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 I agree that there are issues with three disciplines and, mm -hmm. and their triathlon. And I also know that it is a, a race that a lot of people say, but it brings a lot of people here. I worked for them as a volunteer for one of the organizations that I was on, you know, a volunteer for at the time, and we didn't get paid either. And this is the first year they had it here. So, it, you know, we were promised that we would, and it just leaves a very sore feeling um, for me and and it's interesting to hear that again with another um, group now I, you know I think they have problems with communications frankly and that's what trips them up and they are for profit it's a business I think you know all those things need to be considered when we do this and I, I totally get where he's coming from where it's like you know just give me a weekend where I can plan around okay. But promise me then you're not going to you know, move something else in there again. So hopefully we can work that out. Well, that's why I'm hoping that you know, we can at least make that commitment that if we've said to you that there's a weekend and there's nothing else going on that weekend, that can be your weekend, that then we protect that once we've scheduled something for that weekend mm -hmm. just because I, I don't care who it is. They, you know, if it's this other group or, or 
five others. If we've already got one race scheduled on that weekend, we should probably schedule two of them. And then it's not about compromising, it's just, it's like with everything else we do, if somebody has reserved the pavilion for an event, we can't schedule another event in the pavilion. Mm -hmm. So then it makes it less stressful on the city staff too, it's, it's already booked. So. And I know it's not that easy, I no. make it sound easy, I know it's okay. not that easy. <laughs> and your event is important to us and we do want you here. Yeah, so. definitely. Yeah. Um, I do have somebody I, I, I farthest out is Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, in uh, Broken Arrow, and uh, we, the largest we've had is 180, and the largest that I, I pulled up their records, the largest they've had is 220. Mm -hmm. So we're almost the same size. Right. Um, and I, I appreciate you know what you were saying there of trying to get one. Um, originally, what happened was they just changed. They came in. There was a new. I don't know if it was Sandy or not. There was somebody new that took the reservation and didn't know that that had been my date. They did it in August or September. When I saw them advertising in December, I called the city and I pulled up the emails and they said, look, and Mark and I talked and he said, well, you know, if two wrongs don't make a right, I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll suck it up this year and said, guaranteed the next year was going to be mine. They were advertising on my date again. So then the compromise was they would move the day after and what I got out of that compromise was that it was going to be a one-year thing and they're right back at it again um, so okay. I, I'm willing to move I would much prefer it where it's at um, I've done triathlons um, you know because a section of it's in the water a section of it's on the road you can get away with a little warmer temperatures a marathon this Sunday they're calling for 89 degrees that slows runners down. And the yeah. reason why they're coming here, I have numerous emails, they're, they're trying to qualify for Boston because this is a nice flat course and it's, it's fast. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the it's the last one before fall to uh, in order to be able to qualify for that. So, thank you. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. I think there's a motion on the floor. There is a motion on the floor. So, um, Sandy, could we have the roll call, please? Councilmember Meinhardt? Yes. Trippers? Bowman? Yes. Wolfile? Yes. Mayor Fulton? Yes. Motion carried. Next request is uh, for the closure of Lake between Harris and Cash from 5 p.m. on July 14th to 8 a.m. on July 17th for the Art Festival. All right, <clears throat> I'll make the motion to approve the closure of Lake Street uh, between Harris and Cass from 5 p.m. on the 14th of July until 8 a.m. Uh, July 17th uh, for the Cadillac Arts Festival. I'll support. Andy, could we have a roll call? Councilmember Shippers? Spoolman? Yes. Wolfile? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Mayor Falcon? Yes. Motion carries. The last request is for the closure of Chestnut between Linden and the Junior High parking lot and the closure of Linden between Chestnut and West Division from 7 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. on June 26 for the Lumberman Triathlon. Motion carries. Is this the same request that they had last year in terms of street closure, do you know? I don't offhand. I don't know, Sandy, if you recall. No, I don't recall. I'm sorry? I don't recall. Yeah, I don't recall. Yeah, it, looks like, it looks like what they've done in the past to me. How much money do we get out of them for allowing them to do this here? Um, that's probably a question better asked of Joy Bandry, to be honest with you. No, I mean, how much money does the city bring in for allowing them to use our resources? Same as we would with anybody. I don't think there's... So we're not bringing in anything? I don't think so. Uh, 
Mr. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to make the motion to approve the closure of Chestnut Street between Linden and the Junior High School parking lot and the closure of Linden between Chestnut and West Division from 7 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. on the 26th of June uh, for the Lumberman Triathlon. Support. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to have these events here. I know I'm sounding like a curmudgeon, I get that way sometimes, but people need to realize <laughs> you know, what stress this puts on our limited resources too. And um, you know, I know we've talked about putting some type of policies in place, Marcus and I. <coughs> we probably need to get back and put that committee together and look at that. Andy, can we have a roll call please? Councilmember Spoelman? Yes. Wolfile? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Shippers? Mayor Falcon? Yes. Motion carries. And that takes us to the city manager's report. Um, thank you. Sorry, I was still looking to see if there was a permit fee. If there was one, it was probably about $35 in dancing. Um, Got to increase that for for-profit businesses. Yeah. Uh, just one second as I get back into my agenda here. Um, thank you, uh, Mayor and members of the City Council. Uh, the first item under the City Manager's Report is a request for out-of-state travel. Uh, this request is by our police chief. Uh, he was invited to attend the White House 21st Century Policing Briefing in Washington, D.C. Uh, the briefing will actually take place in the Executive Office Building. Um, uh, of the White House uh, in, uh, later this summer in July. Uh, this is an opportunity uh, we believe that we were invited to because of our involvement with the Federal COPS Grant Program uh, that we've been participating in now for, for a number of years. It's helped us uh, keep uh, various numbers on our, uh, on our department. Uh, this uh, opportunity, as it's mentioned in the, in the communication, I will provide the Chief with an overview of the recommendations from the President's Task Force on 21st Century Policing and will allow him to discuss what the recommendations mean to everyday work. Uh, the uh, senior uh, administration officials will also be present uh, to participate in a brainstorming session about how to enhance public trust and confidence in our justice system while maintaining public safety. It's a wonderful opportunity uh, for uh, a senior member of our uh, of our staff here in Cadillac to participate in, and I would recommend that we allow the Odyssey travel request accordingly. Do you know how many people are invited, are invited to this event? How many other uh, law enforcement officials is it? Uh, There's there are a number of people that are going to be there across the country, but I don't know the exact number. All right. Well, I think it's a good opportunity, uh, so and to represent the city there. So I will make the motion to approve uh, uh, out-of-state travel uh, from the police department as presented. Support. Andy, could we have the roll call, please? Councilmember Wolfile. Yes. Meinhardt. Yes. Shippers. Bullman. Yes. Mayor Falcon. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, thank you, Mayor and members of the City Council. Continuing along uh, the police theme this evening, uh, the next item is a request to acquire a police patrol vehicle, uh, a PPV. Two bids were received. Uh, the recommendation this evening is to go with Signature Ford, the low bid, for a 2016 Ford Police Interceptor, uh, the amount of $25,701. Funds are available in our fiscal year 2017 budget, but we would like to order it now. It does take quite a while for these cars to be built uh, to the specifications uh, and payment and delivery of the vehicle won't occur until the uh, commencement of our new fiscal year, but we'd like to get that process started. So is, is this a delivered price or do we go down and get the car? They're typically a delivered price, yeah. So I think that's how we bid it. We specify that typically in our specifications. Yeah. But we have we have in the past picked up vehicles as well, so mm -hmm. from a variety of departments. I'll make a motion to award the purchase of a new police vehicle to Signature Ford of Owasso for twenty five thousand seven hundred and one dollars. Support. Sandy, could we have the roll call? House Member Meinhardt? Yes. 
Shippers? Bullman? Yes. Bullfile? Yes. Mayor Falcon? Yes. Motion carries. I'm not sure if he is here, Mr. Keyway. <laughs> this is the next item. Be ready. <laughs> Uh, the next item, uh, Mayor and members of the City Council, are amendments to the non-union employees benefit schedule. Uh, these are amendments that we're looking at putting in place uh, uh, as of uh, July 1, which again is the start to our new uh, fiscal year. There are two changes that are being proposed again for the non-union employee group. Uh, and these changes are consistent with the recent changes that have been made uh, in two of our union contracts or our collective bargaining agreements that are out there. So this will create consistency between our personnel. Uh, the first proposal is to close out our Blue, Care, our Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan PPO plan. Uh, that plan is uh, instrumental in helping us in, in cost control with respect to that benefit. Uh, and then the second proposal is to, is to actually increase the employer contribution uh, to our health care savings program from 0.75% to 1%. Uh, that program helps both uh, the employer and our employees from a tax-free advantage standpoint uh, and to set aside money to cover various post-employment medical-related uh, medical related expenses. Uh, the following language within your packets show a, uh, a red line or a, a strike-through copy of the current language uh, than what the amended language would be. Todd, is there something I haven't covered adequately or anything you'd like to add? No, nope, no, nope. we've done, done well. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I have a question. Um, I know that the, the non-union staff generally follows some of the, uh, what gets put into place for the contracted staff or union contracts. Yeah, vice versa sometimes. Um, when making these kind of policy decisions, you know, what's the process? Who do you have for input? To provide input into, like, where do you come up with the amounts? I mean, <laughs> It seems like how, how do we, it seems like council should be involved with it a little bit in the decision making process or the recommendations, and I don't know if we sit on any committees. Um, traditionally, our operations have not involved our elected officials, and I'm not trying to sound um, curt by any by any way in explaining it that way. Uh, we've had uh, meetings with 44 North, our benefit provider. Uh, and with Blue Cross and trying to understand what the what the best options are available to us and what those costs what those costs are available to us so that we could then present to you guys as our as the ultimate policy makers you know what the recommendation is um, I know that there are other government agencies in Wexford County that operate differently where there, where there is you know, uh, official committees and so forth set up by the governing legislative bodies that then oversee the various operational units. But here you do have your hired staff to essentially take care of that role for you. Um, just difference in the, of how we're, how we're set up. Um, and so all that analysis does happen uh, within, you know, the finance department, HR, and, and myself. Um, for us to then bring to you what the what the recommended you know changes or changes are, if it's it's something that we're looking at changing how we do that, I'm certainly open to talking about it. Uh, but that's just more of a council manager form of practice um, that we that we've adhered to. So I don't know if that was a good sure answer. Or not sure. You know, it seems like yeah. I don't know. I know that we make the final decision, but um, it seems like some of us should be involved in getting to that recommendation. And, and I, I totally understand what you're saying about we don't have that committee. But otherwise, you know, I mean, we're the ones who are fidu fiduciarily responsible ultimately. And when I see large payouts for, you know, somebody who's leaving because they have accrued a whole bunch of 
uh, vacation time that's never been used, it starts to bring the question up in my mind, you know, what is our policy? Why isn't there a cap on it? If there is a cap on it, at what level is that cap? Um, and those benefits are all turned off. They've been turned off for quite a while with respect to that type of... Yeah, but how many more people do we have down the road that, you know, we have to plan that for? Um, and there's a hand, there is a handful, but that's because we start. Well, the information that you know I don't see here. I see maybe I'm not reading this right. I don't know. What was? Well, I think it, it, maybe it would be helpful to understand what the total dollar impact it has on the city's financials. The changes that have been made. I think these changes are excellent. I just, yeah. I, I wish it went a little bit further, to be frank. Yeah, but there's a side by side. You know, everybody pays a lot more than this. Not everybody, but many organizations now charge a lot more for health care premiums, and it seems like we're still at the very low end. And, you know, I don't even know where that benchmarking is because we're not really involved with that. Yeah, you know, if Owen or Todd, if you guys have any comments or thoughts on that? I, I would want to have something prepared, and we can certainly have a meeting about it if you'd like, or we can make a presentation, but I'm not prepared to say anything about it at this point. Uh, I will tell you, our, our um, most significant goal has been the cost savings achieved by, you know, no more PPO. I think that speaks for right. itself. And so a lot of, a lot of the decision-making has revolved around how do we make that most amenable and, and least negative impact? So um, we're getting close to that point, and then you know, then you can sort of use a, a different priority number one for your your analysis and decision making. So the PPO is no longer going to be available for new enrollees, new employees, but it's going to continue to be available for through, through December 31st. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. And the last two, if you recall, the last two union contracts that we settled turned that off immediately. Okay. Most of our people are already on the, the HMO. Yeah, the Blue Care Plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did read that, and then I forgot I read it. The other thing that was interesting to me is, um, you know, the the amount that's paid for drugs and then there's a rebate on that? There's a, there's a reimbursement each year of $250 um, and that's for the whole family, it's not individual. So <clears throat> if you had to pay $80 for a drug, um, you could get reimbursed for $60 of that. You'd still have to pay 20 of it. But then you could, let's say, um, you know, use that HRA reimbursement of 250. Uh, so then you'd have 190 left for the rest of the year for the whole family. So it can go pretty quickly if you if you have a lot of maintenance drugs or a prescription that's very expensive. Some of the high tier drugs can be several hundreds of dollars still to the employee, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're capped um, at a twenty percent of their cost, but that can still be very expensive. Right. So what we're proposing tonight is really a give and take. We're taking the PPO, which is an expensive plan for us to manage, and in return we're um, bumping up the healthcare savings plan a bit because those who started after 2007 do not enjoy any type of retiree health benefit whatsoever. So that's controlled the cost um, greatly at this point. Um, yes, we still have individuals on that. There's still going to be more, but uh, the future certainly looks a lot uh, brighter when it comes to the health care portion. Um, and the vacation, I know you touched on, but that is capped. You can never, um, you know, each year you have to, you have to utilize your vacation, and then we have caps for when you leave, um, you know, and the, 
The individuals who were here prior to 2007 have sick and vacation, they get paid out, but those who are after 2007 no longer have sick vac vacation, or sick paid out, so those big payouts are no longer. <coughs> Except for, of course. Except for those prior to 2007. Right. Those employees that are prior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those were capped as well. Sick time payout was, uh, and it was a little different for like police and fire. But there was uh, you could you could accum continue to accumulate for use in case you had a catastrophic injury and you had to have sick time. But the payout was um, I can't even remember exactly what the police department was. It was 60 percent of so many days, and then it dropped down to a lower percentage for a number of more additional days, and that was the total you could cash out at the end. Mm -hmm. And if you were an employee that had a cash, catastrophic injury and, and had to use sick time, there the payout may be very minimal because you didn't. If you were a 25-year employee that hardly ever took a sick day, then you could max that out and get that percentage payout of what you had what it had built. But uh, but yeah, that, that's going to come to an end as well. Okay, thank you for that discussion. Mm -hmm. All right, well. Somebody needs to make a motion here, so... Thank you for all your work on that. <laughs> I'm going to request or make the motion to approve the non-union employees benefit schedule as, am as amended. Support. Andy, could we have a roll call? Councilmember Shippers? Bowman? Yes. Wolfile? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Mayor Fulton? Yes. Motion carries. Um, thank you, Mayor and members of the City Council. The uh, next item is under adoption of ordinances and resolutions, and this is a resolution of support uh, for the people of Orlando in light of the uh, tragedy uh, that has occurred just recently. Mayor, mm -hmm. if you'd like to... Yes, I will read that and yeah. also let you all know that the Mayor's Youth Council also did a resolution letter of support that's going to be going down to the city of Orlando as well. So, the resolution of support of the people of Orlando, Florida. Whereas the good people of Orlando, Florida have suffered the greatest loss of life in a mass shooting in the history of the United States, and whereas this carnage fostered by hate targeted the young people and specifically the LGBT community of Orlando, Florida, and whereas acts of hatred and violence affect people everywhere, and whereas the city of Cadillac desires to advance the core democratic values of life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, the common good, justice, equality, diversity, and truth. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Cadillac City Council hereby offers condolences to and solidarity with the city of Orlando, Florida, and the good people of the Orlando LGBT community. Be it further resolved, the Cadillac City Council hereby condemns all acts of hatred and violence directed toward any citizen or citizens or any group in the United States of America. This is to certify the above resolution was approved by the city Cadillac City Council at a regularly scheduled meeting held on June 20, 2016. I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution of support for the people of Orlando, Florida. I'll support. Candy, could we have the roll call, please? Councilmember Spolman? Yes. Roll file? Yes. Einhardt? Yes. Shippers? Mayor Token? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, thank you, Mayor and members of the City Council. This next item is a resolution amending the General Appropriations Act for fiscal year 2016. Uh, again, that's the year that... Oh, no, skipped no, one. oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We skipped the gaming license. Thank you. Um, I'll do that about once a meeting, I think. Uh, the uh, uh, City Council previously adopted a resolution in support of Love, Inc. Uh, with respect to their um, uh, request for a, a gaming license. This is something required per state. Uh, the state of uh, Michigan was... Um, not necessarily happy with how the title came across and so if you look in your packets um, I believe I thought we had just done one yeah we did we did and this is this is simply a redo 
uh, changing the name. Sandy, do you recall what they needed on their name change? I don't see it. Love, anymore. Inc. Okay. of Wexford and Osceola County. Okay. And it just simply said Love, Love Inc. Inc. For. Okay. So that's, that's what we're here to adjust. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the local governing body resolution for Love Inc. Of Wexford and Osceola County. Of Wexford and Osceola County. I support. Sandy, could we have the roll call? Councilmember Wolfile? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Shipper? Spoolman? Yes. Mayor Falcon? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mayor, members of the City Council. That, that ending part was the piece that we got hung up on. So. Um, Owen, if you wouldn't mind, go on hipster. Okay, so we're here to talk about fiscal year 2016 budget amendment number four. So I'm going to walk through this rather quickly to not spend any extended amount of time, uh, but feel free to stop me or um, make a note and ask me a question at the end. So um, starting with page one in the general fund, I think the first page and a half or so are, are for the general fund. Uh, on, the, on the revenue or source of funds side, Going to, going to appropriate a little bit of additional reserves to cover some of the expenditures that we'll talk about in a moment. And speaking of the sick and vacation uh, payouts, we are amending the budget for one of those that we had uh, a couple of months ago. And I was going to make a note on that, that we measure that liability every single year. We do an update of the liability. We have funds set aside uh, specifically targeted to fund 100% of that liability. Uh, that liability five years ago was was uh, 446, 446,000, and as of today, it's at 385. So uh, it is trending in the right direction. And again, it's it's updated, it's reported in our financial statements, and we uh, we take a look at that every year. So that payout um, for um, this employee who had uh, moved on and was a long-term employee was 18,000. On the assessor side, uh, we're we're needing to appropriate an additional $3,500. Uh, this was to cover the cost of a significant commercial um, tax tribunal case. Um, and so we had to, to pay for that appraisal that we hadn't, hadn't planned on doing. Uh, on the clerk treasurer side, uh, related really to the same activity, uh, we have had some additional uh, refunds of taxes that were paid that we had to make in the current year. We had budgeted 15000 for that, and we are uh, going to need an appropriation of 24200 um, to cover that. Primarily, it was for uh, two issues um, that Council has. Um, one, I believe, that Council dealt with, and then the other was uh, a building that uh, sold at the final tax foreclosure for, for well less than the taxes that were due and so we had the county had settled those taxes with us on the tax years and so we had to reimbursement reimburse the county for those since those taxes would never be paid so need an additional ninety two hundred dollars for that uh, in the fire department uh, a small appropriation or a, an appropriation I should say for wages and benefits uh, that's where the um, the resignation came in um, and also we settled the contract with a small uh, COLA and so we need a little bit of an additional money for that on the, on the uh, wages and benefits side. Moving to page two, this one is a little bit unique um, and so I'll try and explain it as simply as I can. The local street fund received a special appropriation from the state of Michigan this year for roads and that um, um, that revenue amounted to about $120,000. So um, what I'm proposing to council, and Marcus and I have talked about uh, this, and he is supportive of this as well, is to, to take uh, $120,000 of the amount that the general fund was to contribute to the local street fund uh, and instead take that money and transfer it to the, the stores and garage fund, which manages the, all the fleet and that will assist that fund in cash flowing. Uh, we just bought the new uh, $200,000 worth of uh, plow truck, and so that will help provide uh, cash for that fund to do that. 
So we haven't done that in the past, um, but uh, that would be my recommendation. Because of that special appropriation for road maintenance, this continues to utilize these uh, dollars for road maintenance activity because it puts them in the stores and garage fund. So accomplishing the same purpose, just a little bit different way. On the Major Street Fund side, I'm going to have a small correction here um, that I just uh, discovered today, but um, the, uh, the street projects that we've been talking about uh, for, for a long time here did actually get underway, as you know, um, here in June. Um, in, in my mind, I was kind of anticipate, anticipating that not happening until July, but we do need to appropriate some funds for the activities that will uh, we'll get done this year. So. Uh, a portion of that money is coming from the state of Michigan uh, with uh, the major road dollars that we're eligible for for this project. And then, as uh, if you recall, we've talked, I think, on a couple of occasions that, that the uh, major street fund has about $360,000 in reserves that we are going to utilize to fund uh, the, the city match, and this would be the Cobb Street and the West Division Street project. So. Uh, this amendment on the major street side uh, facilitates that uh, those projects, at least what will get done prior to June 30, which, um, you know, this is kind of a guess, but anything that, that needs to be reappropriated for the, the next fiscal year, we can do that at a later date. Um, so I'm anticipating about 150000 or really about $300,000, $350,000 in project costs for the current fiscal year and uh, a little bit more than half of that will be city funds by the time you add in their uh, construction engineering costs. So um, the grant revenue and the reserves are the top section. Under construction, um, the, the top line should actually say, instead of zero, it should start with 7500 because there was a small appropriation of $7,500 in there to finish the uh, street sign. Uh, project and then the amended budget would be 357.5 and so the increase would be 350 and those exact same numbers would be on that second line. Went through a couple of, of iterations of this and, and just simply didn't change that. So uh, that's what that would be. Page three is uh, fairly significant. The uh, This appropriates the funds for the current year portion of the cost of the downtown project. Um, so the, the top section shows that we did receive some money from the state, um, local community stabilization share, and that was for reimbursement from uh, small taxpayer exemption on the personal property side, uh, funds that would have been captured by the DDA. Contribution from private sources. Um, there are more coming in, incidentally, but these have already come in. So consumers, this is the consumers grant that uh, that they uh, gave to us. The state of Michigan is two sources. The the uh, MEDC gave two hundred thousand dollars towards the project, and then thirty thousand dollars of the blight uh, grant will come to this fund because it's for the Forbes building. Uh, there will be a need to make a, a, an internal loan uh, because the bonds that we're uh, proposing won't be settled by then, but we do have funds on hand to be able to do that. There was some rental income on the offices in the interim and then appropriation of reserves, which incidentally the, uh, the DDA has been fully supportive and, and committed to using those funds for this project. And then the expenditure side. Contractual services would be for the uh, design and the construction engineering, and then the construction is fairly self-explanatory. Um, and again, it's kind of an estimation on what the final pay request would be related to the parking lot. Uh, we do have some some more uh, better understanding of costs, obviously, that we've already incurred, um, but that's what. Uh, that's what those would be. So that's kind of a big one, so if we need to come back to that one and talk about it all we can. Uh, lastly, page four is an amendment to uh, appropriate funds and activities related to the blight grant. So this is where 
uh, in this development fund where we're proposing to take the, the city match from. So um, the remainder of the, the grant will flow through here, uh, about 45000 and then utilize about $7,600 in reserves in this account to cover the local match on that grant. And then the contractual services is simply the activities, um, the demolition, and the asbestos activities related to demoing those structures. That's a lot to digest. If there's any questions, we'd be happy to take those. Where are, Where is the revenue that we brought in from the um, crowdfunding? Yep, that's in the, um, the pavilion is a separate, we've recorded that as a separate capital projects fund in the current fiscal year. And so those costs have already been have already uh, recorded and appropriated. Yep, okay. yep. So you'll see those in our financial statements this year. They won't be in, in you won't see them again in a budget because that project is done, but you'll see them okay. in our financial statements okay. when they're done for June 30, 2016. So the rental income offices, that was from the Forbes building from the time that we took over the building and then they yep. moved out? Yep, there was about three months. Okay. And there were some costs associated with that too, so we had to pay some utilities and, and pay some liability insurance on the building. So. All the way to the first page. Yep. Um, what is that? The reserves amount. Oh, you did. That's the top. The top section. Yeah. So we had. Yeah, we had budgeted to use ninety-nine thousand in reserves, and we're going to need to I use a, a little bit more. We have to take more out. Yep. Mm -hmm. So are these the last amendments to two sixteen budget? Yes, can't make any after the year's over, so 10 days from now. This is where the six weeks of sweating comes in, and yeah, I hope everything came in okay. How come we're not taking anything away from any of these line items that we over-budgeted? Well, yeah, we could do that, and I think you know, <laughs> typically we've just let those come in under. Okay. And I so would, my, my estimate is going to be that we're going to use something less than 123. I hope so. I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution amending the General Appropriations Act for fiscal year 2016. Uh, support. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Meinhardt? Yes. Shipper? Bullman? Yes. Wolfile? Yes. Mayor Shulkin? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, and this evening we have minutes of boards and commissions uh, for our um, review. And we have the minutes of the Courthouse Hill Historic District Commission for the meeting that was held on March 14th, along with the meeting from May 16th. At this time, we'll open the floor for our second public comment. Thank you. Um, I am an avid biker, and a um, week or two weeks ago, we were um, we always start out behind the AMVETS building, and then we head out on our bike ride on Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. And somebody, I, I didn't catch his name, stopped by and took a picture of us and said that he was trying to get a grant to put a trailhead where the white pine ends. You're, you're familiar? Okay. Um, and we were excited about it. We don't actually use the white pine for biking. We consider it kind of boring. Um, two years ago when I first started road biking, that's where I went because it's safe and it's closed off. Um, 
it, but there's a lot of people out there. We're excited about the uh, the bathroom facilities and all the renovations that are going on out there. We're very excited. Well, I'm on a committee that is uh, involved with the Cadillac Pathway. Uh, friends of mine that I ride with um, started a race out there called the Bear Claw. And all the money from that is being reinvested in the trail. Um, we're on our fourth dump truck load of road gravel to smooth out some of the tree roots. If you've ever gone for a walk back out there, just walking, you're going to trip and stumble a little bit. Um, we've had Mountain Biking Association out there, and they said, well, you've got to redesign your trails, and we're taking little bits at a time. And one of our first goals is we're trying to create a winter sports trail. Um, I'm on the race team for McLean, and I found out that the shop in Cadillac outsold their Traverse City stores for the fat bikes with the great big wide tires. Um, Cadillac is at the far south end of what people consider up north. I mean, we get a good amount of snow, so when there's a warm snap downstate and people want to come up for their winter activities, Cadillac is often their first stop. And even if they do continue on, they'll often stop to go skiing or, you know, whatever activity, winter activity they want here in Cadillac on their way up. We're trying to get a winter sports trail, and uh, in the last year of trying to do this, we've ran into so many roadblocks just because we don't know how to navigate, you know, the, the, the system. Um, but we're working with the DNR. Uh, we're trying to, we're in the process of buying a new snowmobile because the snowmobile they currently use, I was told they got from, they seized it from a, someone there that was selling drugs or drug bust or something. But it's, it's not powerful enough to do what we want to do. So the Bear Claw is reinvesting their money. And my understanding is we're about halfway from a more powerful new snowmobile, a trailer, and the grooming equipment, brand new, you know, um, what we currently have for grooming for skiing is, I would call it homemade. It, it's great for what we have. A lot of places don't have it at all, but we're looking for the next step up. If we're going to do it, we want to do it right. Um, so I'm not here to ask anything of you guys other than just to make you aware that we are in the process of doing this. And I don't know if the conversation ever comes up. I just wanted you guys to know what was going on that way. You know, I find the more people that know about it, the more things can get smoothed over. Um, we were originally looking. We wanted. To, we thought it would be best to station it at uh, to have the, the the start of this at CTC. Um, that's where they do their. They keep their grooming equipment there for the skiing, and we thought it would be perfect just to continue with that. Well, we got told no, and we asked why, and they said, "Well, we're not sure about the liability." And we said, "Well, what's the difference?" And they said, "Well, let sleeping dogs lie." So no, now we're over at the other end of the trailhead, and um, you know, we're it's not as it's not as convenient for a lot of people. We're worried about the storage of the. You know, we want to keep the the. the equipment in a trailer parked there. The DNR said they're okay with it. Um, it's, I'm, we're more worried about it there than we would be at CTC. Um, so just to make you guys aware of it, and do you guys have any questions for me? Do you, are you aware of what a winter sports trail would be? Um, it's, for, it, it's for everything except skiing. It's for people who want to walk their dogs. It's for people who want to go snowshoeing. It's for people who want to bike, or if you just want to go for a walk in the woods. Um, Especially fat biking, it, it's such a new thing. It's kind of, if, you're, if you ski at all, I would call it, I'd compare it back to when snowboarding came out. A lot of skiers don't like snowboarders, um, but what we're finding out now is a lot of ski hills are now open because of snowboarding and skiing together. They couldn't do it financially without the snowboarders. And it's starting to get that way with cross-country skiing, that there's enough people that now bike we wonder whether bo uh, whether the skiing will continue to exist. Um, the two of them don't go together well. If I, I, I ski as well, and if I ride my bike across a groomed ski track, the ski track is ruined. Um, we've never had any kind of fights out there. Like, if you are you aware, there was actually, um, I, I was told, uh, fists thrown uh, between skiers and fat bikers up at Traverse City at the DNR meetings up there. Nothing like that has happened here, and we want to try to keep it that way as well. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have anything for good of the order this evening?
I, I have um, two quick things I wanted to mention. Mm -hmm. uh, one is uh, Freedom Fest is obviously the next large special event mm -hmm. uh, that's occurring. Uh, the Arts uh, Festival is occurring uh, shortly thereafter in the middle of July. The city did send a press release out uh, today, a news release out today, reminding folks that if they're interested in participating in the Mayor's Art Award, uh, to do so accordingly and to fill out uh, the application. Uh, I also wanted to uh, just briefly comment uh, and share the news with respect to the complaint uh, that was filed several months ago uh, surrounding the um, uh, transition of CCTV uh, to, the, uh, to the CTC using MyNews26. Uh, and the Open Meetings Act and violations of our charter, uh, the special prosecutor that was uh, assigned to investigate uh, by the Attorney General's office did come back um, uh, and advise that the um, uh, city did not violate uh, the Open Meetings Act nor our charter in dealing with, with these issues. And so I just think it's important to, to mention that publicly. Great. Good news. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good news. Yeah, it's the, and I do want to comment. We've got some nice events coming up. The ones you talked, and we're going to have our our new facilities. Uh, you say the plaza's going to be able to be parked in. It looks like the pavilion's ready to go for the entertainment. We, you know, we are going to um, uh, be hosting the first event at the pavilion uh, this week. I believe Upbeat Cadillac starts on Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, we will do everything we can to get the weeds cut down that's coming up from the topsoil that was added uh, to make that facility what it is now. The grass was planted using hydro seeding and we're being very, very cautious not to get heavy equipment out there because we don't want uh, to blow all the grass away as we take, take out the weeds that came from the soil. So mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do our best to get that looking uh, absolutely as best as it, it can by Thursday. Uh, and regarding the parking uh, for the uh, upcoming Freedom Festival, uh, as I mentioned before, there should be a, a base layer of asphalt that's laid down. There may or may not be temporary uh, parking stripes that are also laid down, uh, but we're going to do what we can so that there's some hard surface that's there so that folks can park in that area. Uh, as soon as the event is over with, uh, that area will then get cordoned off again so that the remainder of the project can get finished. Uh, so It would be nice to see all that hard uh, work to put to some good use. Yes, yeah, very exciting. Okay, if there's nothing else. I've got the case number. Okay. Um, as Mayor and members of council, as we amended our agenda earlier this evening uh, to include uh, the City of Cadillac versus the Charter Council preparing, that is case number 16-26714-CZ. Uh, and it would be appropriate at this time to uh, a motion to adjourn to a closed session to consider that that case along with uh, the consideration of the purchase or lease of real property pursuant to MCL 15.268D uh, and to invite John Wallace, our community development director, accordingly. Okay, I'll make a motion to adjourn to closed session to consider the purchase or lease of real property pursuant to MCL 15.268D and to consult with the city attorney regarding case number 16-26714-CZ. And we'd like to have Mr. Wallace join us. And if I may make a just a simple 